to call to order the September 15th meeting of the Oklahoma City Board of Adjustment. Our first order of business is the approval of minutes, and our board is, is not complete enough to approve the minutes from September the 1st, August the 4th, July the 7th, or June 16th, and so we will continue those until our next meeting. Do we have continuous requests or withdrawals from staff? We have none today. Do we have any continuous uh, requests or withdrawals from uh, the public today? Hearing none, we will proceed with our first case. Item number one, case number 13456, request of use variance of New Dominion LLC for permit to drill an oil gas well located at 17926 North Choctaw Road. Mr. Chairman, Dennis Box, I'm here with Jerry Bro, and uh, what you see in front of you is uh, one well. Uh, you have previously approved three other locations that will be uh, drilled on the subject. We have, uh, in months past, met with the neighbors, uh, reached an agreement. This is uh, in conformance with that agreement, and uh, we ask your approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve. Please register your vote. You are approved. Thank you very much. Item number two, case number 13457, request of EAN Holdings, LLC, for a variance to the landscaping requirements of the sign regulations located at 3200 South Meridian Avenue. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Becky Hawk, EAN Holdings, Operations Supervisor. Ryan Cotting, Sign Tech. Please go ahead and speak to your application. What we've got, the, and I'll allow Becky to speak as well, the existing location uh, is an existing location with the sign already in place. Uh, you've probably noticed in the packet and the pictures involved there as well, you note that the entire area is uh, concrete. Enterprise has gone through a rebranding of their logo and is requiring them to update all of their logos to existing logos nationwide. As part of doing that, what they're asking to do is to use the existing pole in question and remove the existing cabinets that are currently on place and place the new logo cabinet uh, with their new logo and their new branding. In doing that, with the pass of the ordinance requiring landscaping around freestanding signs, it's created a difficult situation for enterprise at this particular location. For starters, uh, parking is extremely at a minimum at this particular location, and Becky can expand on this even further, but this is an overflow parking area for the airport terminals as well. Um, it also is going to create a, a large expense to them to have to build and upgrade a flower bed or pertaining to landscaping and shrubs around this existing pole since the entire area is concrete. Um, the property, and you can tell in the picture above, uh, it also has a stem wall with a chain link fence across the front of the entire property. Uh, the landscaping that would be required within 10 feet of this pole sign would be very hard to even see it from the street uh, due to the wall and the fences there. Uh, in addition, the property is very well landscaped and with trees and shrubs throughout already uh, all across the entire front of it. Uh, you probably drove by and looked at it. And that area is probably one of the nicest, most well-maintained buildings around there. Uh, depending on what time you drive by that location, it may look sometimes that there's not um, a need for more parking. Sometimes that lot is empty. Um, other times it's, it's, it's really full. Uh, this location is actually a holding ground. Um, it, it kind of services for four locations, actually. And currently, um, we have limited space at the Will Rogers World Airport, and Mark Cranenberg is also looking to try to get the consolidated facilities coming along, um, which is in five years, we think. And so, but until then, we use this as an overflow parking for the Will Rogers World Airport, that we, the locations we have at the, at the airport. Um, we also use it for our consolidated facility that we have up on Guy Fuller Road, where we, that's where we clean our cars. That's, uh, this, this lot actually um, holds cars overflow for that. 
we are leasing um, a piece of property from the airport as extra parking um, up at the up towards the airport and then we also have another location that we're leasing it's a gravel lot that's up there as well so we've had to go out and get more parking spaces just to accommodate what we need at this location as well what's the estimate on the uh, parking spaces that will be lost Do you know ballpark figure I would estimate Depending on, you know, what the point structure is in place, I mean, they definitely have to get a landscape designer to develop and design it. But I would estimate, in addition to what's already being taken there, at least another two parking spaces. Uh, with the requirements that the uh, city requires, one point for every two square feet uh, signage. And with 220 square feet, they're going to have to have roughly 110 points. Uh, just for example, Two gallon, a five gallon shrub that's two foot tall at the time of planting is worth three points. So 110, I mean, just using those shrubs right there, I mean, it's going to take up a massive area to just to, to meet the requirements that they've set forward. So I'd say at a minimum of two parking spaces, possibly more. And this accommodates automobiles coming from the airport, correct? I'd make a motion we approve the variance. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please register your vote. You are approved. Thank you. Thank you. Item number three, case number 13458, request of Henry Bowie for a variance to the landscaping buffer and site proof screening requirements located at 1013 Southwest 89th Street. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Richard Ewald, uh, representing Henry Bowie. Uh, this is a existing commercial uh, uh, site plan of which the south half is developed, the north half is undeveloped that he owns. He's asking for a variance to the site screen <clears throat> and uh, landscape buffer requirement, which is basically across the north side uh, because he feels that would be an undue hardship to um, construct this at this time, I'll, even though he has comp uh, completed a set of engineering plans to develop the north, the north half of this property in the near future. Uh, it feels it would be unnecessary to build something and then be required to uh, take it down in, uh, in a short time frame. And that's the nature of this request. What do you consider a short time frame? One to two, well, let's say two years out. He's got a three-year-old set of plans uh, from Morris Engineering where Southwest 88th Street that has been vacated is uh, <clears throat> basically a closed line now. He's got it, a set of plans uh, designed to pave that to open up the north half of his property uh, to future development. Would you be willing to uh, take a time frame on this? One year? If it's not done in one year, then you put the fence up? That sounds reasonable to me. That would be my motion. I'll second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Please register your vote. You are approved with stipulation that uh, for one year. Thank you. Okay. Item number four, case number 13448, request to Brian and Michelle Odom for a variance to the minimum five-acre lot size located at 13401 North Henny Road. Your name and address, please. Michelle Odom at 13401 North Henny Road. Brian Odom. I want to speak to you and tell us about your application, what you want to do. We are um, 
requesting a variance to the minimum five acre lot size so that we can build um, a structure, a home next door to my in-laws. My father-in-law had a massive stroke last year and he was the primary provider for their for his family. My mother-in-law's here with us and um, we are asking for this so that Brian and I can build next door. Um, this has always kind of been, it's been our plan to live there once, you know, it's Brian's inheritance and um, she's just having a hard time. It's been a year. She's having a hard time taking care of the land and Brian's father. And so we'd like to build next door so that we can help more often. And your intention is is, is that at some point when you're no longer occupying your home for, for that house to, to come down and for us to go back to having a one single family house on a five acre lot. Yeah. Uh, we've spoken to the neighbors directly to the south who would pretty much be the only people in the area that would be able to view the house and the structure based on where we're going to build. And they have absolutely no problem with it. And the land directly to the west and the north is all owned by uh, family. It's the land's been in the, in the family for about 60 or 70 years. So you're aware of no opposition, correct? No, sir. I'd make a motion to approve the variance. Before we do that, I just as, uh, as part of your staff report, it, 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 we're empowered to impose a time limit, if you wish. Would a three-year time limit be acceptable if, if the need for your, your father and your mother would still existed at three years, you would simply come back and ask for the variance request again? With that, I mean... Is that okay with you? The existing home would be there, so if you said no in three years, we would have to tear our house down? I think, I think probably the intention behind putting a time limit on it is just not to leave it open-ended where it just goes on and on and on without anything, you know, without the ability to check back and to say, you know, have circumstances changed or are they the same? My concern with um, it is the $1,200 it costs us every time we have to come here. And that would put a, you know, I mean, we're already under a financial strain with Brian's father not being able to work now and Beverly having to work to just pay their insurance because of his father's young age. I mean, it's just, I mean, I, I think that we're willing to say, you know, we would tear the house down if once they're not living there anymore, and we'll, we have no intention, we can put it in there, we have no intention to sell the land that's two and a half acres each. And, but to come back every three years and spend $1,200 just, it seems like a lot to me. But I mean, we'll, we're willing to do whatever we need to do. I'm confused. Uh, I'm confused by this. Uh, what, if we're doing a lot split, if we're actually splitting the lot, what's that got to do with tearing the house down in the future? I don't See, think we're, we're creating two separate lots, right? So, I mean, I, I mean, that medical hardship, you know, when we rob a mobile home or whatever, I mean, then you got something, you know, where you're going to take the mobile home off or do something like that. But yeah. I, I must be missing something. You know, the mobile home is, is for every three years, and once the need's no longer there, the mobile home goes away, and you have, have compliance again. We were just trying to, to style an application that was similar to that to where we knew at some point we'd be back to one home and one five-acre track. But, the, but if, you're, if we're splitting the lot, then does the lot get on split at that time? Right. We yes, would sir. put it back to five. It does get on. Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's our intention. We would put it is, back at five acres. Just to put it back at five acres. The only reason we need to split is because the bank won't loan us the money if it's not split. They won't loan for two structures on one home. So, so don't you have to say then, I mean, don't you, wouldn't that have to be part of the application? Or the, the motion is that you're, is that once the other one's off of there, that it would go back to five acres? Huh? I don't know how we I don't know how we control that though unless we put a time limit on it. But if, but if you but if you split the lot, something has to change that, doesn't it? How old is your father in law? Fifty six. Fifty nine, I'm sorry. So that's the thing is we the mobile home won't survive, so this is gonna be our permanent home and our children go to school in the Jones School District and we are simply trying to get over there next door so that my husband, he, Brian's a state trooper, he works at night so he can be there all day with his dad and she's at work and so we have to leave him home by himself right now because the insurance won't cover home health and so it's just it's scary because he's, you know, he's had part of his left side of his brain removed so he doesn't always know how to dial 911 if something wants to happen or we just, I, think, I think we're all in favor of your application here. There. Just trying to figure out the technicality. I mean that we're just going to figure out the technicality because it's a different application than we're used to. Um, 
How old is the existing house? It was built in 1973. Okay, and if the father-in-law passes away, you're going to, your mother-in-law is going to move out of it? No, no. sir. She's going to remain no. there. She still can't take care of there, the family. There's a statement in, in our, our um, folder that says the applicant stated that the existing house will be removed when the medical hardship is no longer needed. Let me, let me interject something. I'm being advised that we, we might have the option, instead of having you come back in three years, we simply state that it's subject to review in three years, and that would save you the application fee. It would be the burden of the city to keep track of that and to simply touch base with you and on the, the status of your family and your circumstances. I would amend my motion to uh, make it subject to the review of Oklahoma City. A three-year review? A three-year review. I'll second. Mr. Baker? Everybody's happy. Everybody's got a voice. Everybody's happy. We have a motion and a second. Please register your vote. You are approved. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Hmm. Item number five, case number 13244, request of Lana Comia for extension of the time period approved for completion pursuant to an order of the board located at 524 Northwest 17th Street. Before Mr. Friesen speaks, I would like to just so that we're all on the same page, Mr. Allen's been away for a couple of meetings and, and that we had uh, conditioned your last continuance on the appearance of the Bowmans and the contractor. And I want the board to know that, that uh, Mr. Friesen did contact Rita and let her know that the Bowmans, uh, because of other circumstances, were not available today, but they are available for our next meeting and that the contractor you know, we still ask for him to attend today, and it looks to me like that he is in attendance. So, please. That is correct. My name is Doug Friesen. I'm attorney for Burton Mary Bowman, address 1309 North Chartel. Um, the Bowmans are wrapping up the business they currently have on their posting in Springfield, Illinois, uh, ending his employment there at the last of this month, and as part of reviews from now till then as well as he's the assistant manager of the facility there. Uh, he can make it on the 6th. I've confirmed that with him and I passed that on to Ms. Talley. The contractor is here. Since our last meeting, the following work has been done on the addition to the house. With the exception of a very few shingles around the large windows on the east side of the house. All of the work has been done with the exception of the shingles that need to be laid on the top side, on the very top of the roof line. And I think they were classified as install shingles at space between top of new rear roof and top of remaining existing wall as well as the wall brackets that go with those. We have obtained a estimate from a gentleman that has worked in the historical district before. The gentleman's name is Zimmerman Company. Uh, like the work that he has done, he's familiar with the requirements in the area. Uh, he has given us an estimate that we have accepted the problem with him is that he lives out in Piedmont and his house was wiped out in the tornado. He has indicated that it would be four to six, one, four to six weeks before he could get started and it would be a two-week project. Did not tell him it was okay on that pending the approval of that of this board. The only other thing that remains to be done is the back stairs uh, and the sidewalk there obtained a bid from Bill's Construction are his out on that because he mainly does larger jobs. Once again, we've checked with the quality control regarding his uh, construction techniques, etc. There is one problem that we're going to have to do some peering there, but and it's one of the reasons that we can't just have any concrete company do it. 
but he has also told us four to six weeks out and that that's about a three-day job for him to do. So with those two exceptions and then the painting of the shingles and a few shingles trim around the windows on the east side that should be finished up either, well, probably the first next week now if they don't get done this week. Everything else is done that is on the to-do list. Does that deal with the, uh, the non-conforming items that Catherine pointed out at our last meeting? I'm sorry? Non-conforming. There were some repairs that were not in conformance. I have looked over a number of the non-conforming items, and there seems I need to get together with Catherine. I have not done that. But there are a number of items on the non-conforming items that are either temporary items, such as the window air conditioning, on the inside, since we have not come, since we have been working at virtually exclusively on the outside since this happened, initially there was an air conditioner put in, a temporary window air conditioner put in on the outside so that uh, the contractor could work there in the whatever heat it's been this summer. But that is not to be permanent. It is going to be an, a duct opening. And so there are some things like that that are in here that were not meant to be permanent. Uh, I think Catherine is a little bit confused about the windows. She indicates that there were basement windows. Uh, this is an addition on the house, and there is not a basement underneath the addition part. The drawings there were always meant to be storage opening doors and not windows and were never indicated as windows on any of the plans that we've given. So I need to get together with her on those privately one-on-one. -on -one. I've been mainly concerned with getting the to-do items done, and I will talk with her if you want prior to the 6th when I know we're going to have to come back for the Bowmans and uh, see which of those can be worked out and which of those might be misunderstandings or temporary items. I, I would strongly suggest that you, you know, be in close communication with Catherine on, on whatever items are left. Yes, sir. Doug has just filled us in on the, uh, the progress since our meeting two weeks ago, and I assume, have you been back by the property, and can you report to us? Catherine Montgomery, Historic Preservation Architect with the City. I have been back by the property on Tuesday and took additional photographs. I do not have those prepared for you today. The progress that seems to have occurred since the last time we were um, talking about this is that the site seems to have been raked and there's been trim installed on the east windows. That was about the most that I had noticed. Is that consistent with what, what you're describing? In addition, there has been, and may not have noticed it because the changes are relatively subtle, but there were a number of windows on the east side that needed additional shingling around them. All of them have some additional shingling, but we are, the one area that has not been done is there's an area that we have to rip off some shingles to re-shingle to get them to lay underneath. That's the only thing that hasn't been done, but there's also been shingling done. But there, other than getting the contractors, uh, which is not outside work, there has been no work done on the house, and the contractor is working on a full-time basis. There's been no work done that hasn't been full-time. Uh, there's been no work done on the inside. As courtesy to Catherine, why don't you fill her in on the two contractors that you've made contact with and what you're expecting? The one that we have for doing the shingles is Zimmerman Company, and the one that we have for doing the uh, steps and sidewalk is Bill's Construction. Is Zimmerman the gentleman from Piedmont? Is that right? That can't start for four to six weeks? Yes. Like I say, the only hesitation for him there when he committed is because his house was demolished in the tornado. He feels it's probably more important to get his family underneath the roof than work on mine. Can I excuse you for a moment? And uh, Mr. Dell has asked to speak to the board. Thank you. My name is Brian Dell. I live at 528 Northwest 17th Street, immediately west of the property that we're talking about here at 524. 
since the last meeting two weeks ago, uh, today's the first day that I've actually noticed anybody that was working there on the outside. And I did see uh, the contractor there on Saturday for about two hours, but I never saw him on the outside. It's entirely possible that the work that he did was on the east side, which is where the work that was being done by the swamper for him was being done today. And it appeared to me, from what I could see as I drove by at 1 o'clock, that uh, the area of a bay window on the east side of the house had been stripped of all of the shingles and bare wood. And if he was putting shingles back up, I could not see that. But nothing has been done on the west side. Nothing that I could see was done on the south side. Nothing was done on the north side. And as I pointed out in the letter that I submitted and circulated to you that there were no pictures taken since then because nothing has been done that was visible from our property. Uh, there are a couple of cars that are parked in the backyard. Um, my only complaint is, is that this has been going on for, I think, seven years or something like that. And it was been back before this board beginning back, I guess, in June. And it seems as though every time that we come down here that it's always, always something can be done four to six weeks in the future. And, um, well, I understand, and our only desire is that the place get brought into conformance. That I would tell the board that from what we could see from our side of the things is, is that everything that was noted to be non-conforming last time is still non-conforming. And it would be difficult for me to at least to understand why it is that uh, those things that were obvious and non-conforming could not have been done, in that, or at least started in that period of time. I think this was pointed out by one of the members of the board last time, or not last time, but perhaps the time before. There's more than one roofer in town, and if there's a roofing problem, it could have been taken care of by any number of them because there were a host of, and a horde, if you will, of roofers that came in with regard to the various storms that we had here. So my only concern is, is that so I hear that uh, we're waiting one more time for the um, Bowmans to be here at the, the next meeting. And I presume that that next meeting will be on the um, 29th. Is that what we're looking for? October 6th. October 5th? 6th. Okay. The reason that, I mean, I, my wife teaches at the School of Science and Math, a biochemistry professor, and it, her class is unfortunately on Thursdays afternoons, a class in the lab. And it, I've gone in every now and then I have to be in court on Thursday, and I'm just trying to make sure that I'm be available for whenever it is that you have this next meeting. So, but you're talking about October 5? Yeah, October 6. And okay. I want to reassure you that I think all of us, you know, hear your concerns and have heard your concerns and, and are doing everything within our power. To, to move this project toward the completion that, that, that we all seek. And I, you know, I, I would like for it to happen sooner rather than later too. But you know, I, I hope that, that you feel like we're at least making some incremental progress. We're, we're dealing directly with Mr. Friesen and not with Lana now. Sure. And uh, you know, my sense is, is that, that the Bowmans and Mr. Friesen and, and hopefully everybody take seriously the orders of the board and that we are, you know, um, that we're making progress. But again, I, you know, I share your frustration. It's not happening fast enough. And, and, but we, we want it to happen. And I, I think all of us are sympathetic to, to your situation as a next door neighbor and for the neighborhood association and the community. We appreciate the fact that the board has become completely aware of what's been going on there next door and that uh, from the things that the board has said over the last several meetings, we do understand that you are as interested as we are in getting this project complete. But my wife and I just hope we live long enough, you know, sometimes it's kind of I, I expect forever. that you will. I expect that you will. <laughs> Mr. Friesen, could we meet your Thank contractor? Sure. His name is John Nelson. Please, your name and address for the record, please. John Nelson, 1260 Southeast 24th, Oklahoma City. One of the concerns of this board has been the, the, the speed at which work on this house has taken place. And, and we've been gathering that, that I guess you've been working on the exterior, but also the interior of the house. Primarily and, the interior, yeah. yeah. And we have asked that that change. Yes, in, in the past three to four weeks, I have stopped completely on the interior and am now concentrating on the outside and have done the small, the list that I saw, I've done two or three of those items completed and Mr. Friesen has contacted 
to other contractors that would do those things that I'm not able to. That you don't do. Okay. Well, I just, you know, the board wants the, the order taken seriously. And for your benefit and the benefit of the neighbors and the neighborhood and the community. Well, yes, sir. The only thing I've noticed is that if someone said that I have not been there every day working or that no work has been done on a certain area, it's because the south end of the house and the east side of the house are those that we're concentrating on now. And the west side of the house, which I believe is the one that would face the neighbor there, um, the contractor that he's getting to come in to do the high work, which is two stories high. And my old knees are not able to do that kind of two-story work anymore. So, But he has got a contractor bidding on that and has made arrangements, you know, in six to eight weeks to have that done. Any questions from the board for our contractor? I guess the only question I'd have is this uh, to you, Mr. Nelson, Mr. Zimmerman. Is that someone that you helped select that's going to do the shingle work? Yes, the neighbors on uh, on the east side, he did a, a bunch of their reconstruction work on their home. Um, and he's worked, I believe, on at 19th Street also in that area, uh, doing restoration work to homes that needed it. Um, it is Jamie Zimmerman Construction. He's out of Piedmont and does, I looked at his work, does very nice work. Is there anybody that you could recommend that could get out sooner? Rather than four weeks? No, I have assisted in calling around, and for an economically poor area, it's, it's amazing how much work there is out there that's going on right now. You don't find anybody that says, no, I don't have much work, and, and I'd be happy to get right out there next week and do it. Everybody seems to be at a two- or three-week lead time. Um, the concrete work, I believe, uh, was two weeks out and, and, and a, a week to do. Uh, so everyone seems to have work, and which is a good thing. Is, is there any reason that, that based on what you know and, and the, the timelines that you're being given by these other contractors, that this exterior work should not be finished before we enter winter months? Um, no, sir. Not that, not that I can tell. Providing these, these people can show up when, when they commit themselves to, uh, it's a one to two week, uh, you know, for this type, shingle replacement. The problem with cedar shingles are that you can't go in and just put a, two or three strips up on high. They all start at the base of the house and then overlap themselves, three shingles all the way to the top. If you try anything else, it's a patch and it ends up leaking. Uh, and so it's necessary to come down as far as you can to the first opening and then start there and go all the way to the top. And we're talking about over two stories high clear up to the, to the eve of the house. So they have to have special lift equipment to come out to get workers up that high and, and do the job. If everyone shows up on time, yes. when do you think this will be completed? The exterior yes, repairs? Um, with, con with concrete and shingles, uh, I'd say six to eight weeks. So by the... If they the commit, if they do show up, you know, then, and I believe they, they will. That would be putting you around, you know, the first part, first week or so of November or yeah. so. Any other questions for... How long, how long has this been going on? How long has that house been sitting there, Mr. Dale? How long has it been sitting there undone? Well, I've been working on it since about 2004. It was one of the first applications mm -hmm. made with regard to the outside. It was just first going to be a single level from the back. Just to have you speak in the microphone. I'm sorry. My recollection is, is that there was going to be a single level, one story level, uh, which was going to be open, a hot tub, and a few other things on the back. And then one day, it appeared to be a two story. And that was not by, based on any application because that was contrary to what the plans were. And I think this began back, gosh, I know it's beginning to all run together. It's 2003 or 2004, but it's been going on for a long time. As uh, I think even the inspectors in the city and anybody else has done it know the work's been done. There's been lots of work done on the inside, but 
very little done to the outside until I started complaining in March of this year. But so. Bowman's have uh, been in control of this for two years? I'm sorry? The Bowman's have been in control. No, well, that Bowman's bought it at a sheriff's sale back in 2009, I think it was, uh, through Lanacomia. And uh, I don't know that, I'm only, well, I don't know that they've, I guess they've seen the place, I don't know. Well, the, well, the issue is, is, I mean, that's really the time frame we're talking about is, because it was abandoned previously because of the, uh, because of the uh, foreclosure or whatever. It was really oh, it wasn't abandoned. Huh? Mr. Friesen has lived in it since about 1996 or 1997. Did he own it? Yes. Well, okay. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. If you need the history of the thing, basically, it originally was bought by his dad, Ben Friesen. Mr. Friesen, ben, ben, conveyed it to Ben Friesen LLC. And then, Doug and Judy Polterra married and were for about six months, I think it was. And at uh, some time during that time, I think it was actually conveyed to both of them, if you look at the county records. And then after that, it was conveyed back to Ben LLC. Uh, then, could I ask you to step away from the mic just a little bit? We're, I'm sorry. Just step away from the mic. Okay, I'm well, breathing into it a little bit, I guess. But anyway, the, the, at that particular, some particular point in time, in any event, there were foreclosures and liens from the mortgage holding company, the Oklahoma Tax Commission, and Internal Revenue Service, and forced into a sheriff sale that named everybody that had been ever listed as an owner on the thing from the time that uh, Ben Friesen uh, added in his individual name. The property was then sold at a sheriff's sale, and uh, the Bowmans bought it for $103,000, uh, and that at least liquidated the uh, mortgage note that was against it. I think that the federal uh, tax lien and the state tax lien continued on. But Mr. Friesen's lived there forever. No, he's never moved out. However, uh, Judy Polterra, who was, they were divorced after about six months, but she's lived on there for probably about another seven years until she left. And I would just remind ourselves that our interest is in seeing that the back addition is, is completed. I mean, that was pursuant to our first contact on this, right. this which was, you know, occurred in June of 2010. And so I, you know, I'm appreciative of the background on the property, but uh, our goal is to is to get the addition complete. Uh, I was just answering the question. I understand. I understand. The well, I understand. No, no, I think it is germane to, to the deal. You know, I mean, is that you know, you have all kinds of things going on here and stuff, and, and we're we're being asked now to manage a process, basically, judiciously. judicially. Is there some okay. kind of to manage a process? And you know, I don't know. The, I don't know how you get the end of the deal. You know, you get some people saying, "Well, you know, maybe, maybe this will happen in six weeks or eight weeks or something like that." But uh, you know, somebody's got to say at some point. I mean, we've been involved in this for a year and four months now. Right. I think. I think you know the, our ability to not deal with with Lana on this and to deal directly with Mr. Friesen that Is, you know I, we probably have a better opportunity to have you know good straightforward communication you know, between this board, him, who's actually living in the property, the contractor that's actually doing the work, so that we can get the work done. Is there some kind of monetary, a fine, that could be implemented if this thing is not done in a certain period of time? Is there, is there some way we could control it from that standpoint? No, your authority is to grant um, or not grant the thing requested. And what this started out with was their request for an extension of time. So your choice is to allow it or not to allow it, but you've chosen as a board to monitor it in this manner. What happens if we don't allow it? He is eligible to appeal. While it's on appeal, then all prosecution of doing the work or not having done it without a certificate of appropriateness is stayed. Um, and so nothing would have to happen during the appeal period. So the approach that you're taking so far appears to be best geared to have work result because you're monitoring it. Well, it isn't that, hadn't there been a permit issued for a remodel on the job? Yes. Um, you got this case initially on appeal from the Historic Preservation Commission. They denied this work on the rear addition 
you approved it with the condition mm -hmm. that it be completed by a certain period of time. It was not. That time expired due to a glitch in our system. They were given another six months for a one-year period, and then that time expired in June. So beginning in June, you all have been reviewing whether or not to extend that time. Could, and, could each, the, each time we've continued them, we have continued them with conditions. Could, could there be a fine issued by the, from a permit standpoint? I mean, this thing is, it's gone on forever. It and has gone on for a while, but this, this body, of course, couldn't issue a fine, and the only fining body would be municipal court, and it would be based on a citation for doing work without a certificate of appropriateness. Mm -hmm. But what you have here, instead of a certificate, is a board order. So you've already approved the work, and where you are now is they're asking for more time. If you refuse to give them more time, they're out of time, but there's still, you know, the work that has been done that's outside of the, um, outside of your order and that Catherine Montgomery spoke to, that's something that a citation could be issued for doing the work without a certificate of appropriateness. But the re addition itself, which is really what's before you, those are your choices to approve an extension or not approve an extension. Could I invite Mr. Friesen back, please? We understand that the Bowmans are available for the October 6th meeting. Yes, sir. So I guess the decision for this board is, is whether you want to continue this with the stipulation that the Bowmans appear and Mr. Nelson can be asked to appear again. And we can condition it with, you know, a progress report, you know, from Catherine. And I think, you know, we've already made it clear that the, the work on the interior is to be set aside in favor of finishing the exterior. He's reporting to us that a couple of other contractors are lined up to do some of the work that needs to be done. So it's uh, the board's call in terms of, of how you want to act on this. I would like to make one more statement if I could. Uh, Mr. Dell's statement that he hasn't seen any work being done is a little bit disingenuous. And I say that from the standpoint that he's got a camera set up at my side door where the contractor parks all the time. Now, the fact that he doesn't choose to tell this board that he, in fact, has the ability to tell you exactly when the contractor gets there every morning and when he leaves every afternoon, or the fact that he happens to be at work and doesn't go by there and see it when he comes up and says he hasn't seen any work being done is a little bit disingenuous as he knows exactly when the contractor is there. And I can appreciate your perspective on that. I can also appreciate his frustration Absolutely. over a long period of time. And so uh, we're not going to fight over, over that. We're going to acknowledge that you know, they're impatient and they want the house finished. We want the house finished too, and I think you know for your own well-being. Uh, you As do the Bowmans. Okay. Can we can we quantify exactly what work? Do we have we quantify exactly what work is under our order? I believe Catherine Murray uh, laid out a list. I have a list, in fact, of things that she has given to me that she says needs to be completed for it to be in compliance. Give me and that's what I've been working on. Mm -hmm. hmm. I don't think we were provided a copy of that for today's meeting, but it was it was part of a packet from mm -hmm. Okay. So so if we were to say that this is it in terms of quantifying it, quantify work and quantify an end date, and if not the, it's over with. Is that does that make any sense? I think the way I'd propose it is to ask Mr. Nelson what he is going to accomplish between now and October 6th so we can, we can take a look at what he's done. Um, so what I'd like to know is between now and October 6th, Mr. Nelson, what are you going to be doing on the exterior of the property? If I may, I believe that with the exception of the things around the windows that I discussed earlier, everything else is going to be contracted out because everything else is either concrete work or is actually third-story work because it's a two-story house, 
plus a full attic. And so when we're talking about that, we're talking about 30 feet up. He doesn't do that kind of work. But everything that can be done from the first 15 feet down will have been completed with the shingling around the sides of the windows. I'd still like to hear from Mr. Nelson what he plans on doing between now and October 6th, so the record's clear. Uh, yes, sir. I'm continuing what I've been doing for the past three weeks, which is window trim work on all the lower levels, um, replacing those shingles which need to be replaced, um, all up to about uh, 10 feet, I believe, from ground level on up. Um, and that's what I've been doing for the past three weeks, and I imagine I'm a probably a week and a half to two weeks out from having that all done. And a number of those items were on that small list that Mr. Friesen gave me. Okay. Window trim, shingles. Anything else? No. Right. Exterior-wise, no. Right. I believe all the rest of it, which is concrete work and the high upper level shingle work, would be done by other contractors with the right kind of equipment and so forth. Would you bring us some pictures of the work? that you do between now and October 6th to the next meeting, please? Yes, sir. Catherine, could I ask you to come forward? Is there any uh, work that's been done to the rear addition that's not in compliance with, with the board's orders? There's a list of items that I provided on September 1st that was a continuation of what had been provided at the previous meeting about a month before that. Um, there are some things that when I compare the drawings to what the board approved and um, what has been constructed, there seem to be some differences. And I think before you, you know, before you joined us, we talked about the, that I suggested to Mr. Friesen that he might be in very close contact with you about these, and these, these are non-conforming. Am I correct? Is that the way they're characterized in your report as non-conforming items? Um, I choose to just say that there are differences between what was approved and what is in place. So if that's what non-conforming means, the answer would be yes. Can, can we get some photos of the house as of today with a date on the photo? Yeah. Um, so that we know where it is today and we can look at it a month and see what kind of progress has been done. I actually took photos on Tuesday, so if we can go from Tuesday of this week. Tuesday would be fine with me. Okay. One thing we might consider is, is going ahead, and since the Bowmans have, have, we have arranged for them and asked them to appear on October the 6th, is to consider continuing this to October the 6th, and it is, the Bowmans are to be here. We can request Mr. Nelson to be here again if you would like. We would like to document the, 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 the state of the house as it exists right now, to have photographic documentation of, of the house's condition just prior to the October 6th meeting, and for whatever motion we entertain to include the scope of the work that Mr. Nelson just gave us that he says he can complete the next week and a half and two weeks, and to also report to us any changes or, or expected changes in the, in the other two contractors that, that you that you expect to use and, and, and whether they're on schedule, you know, to begin the work when you think or not. You know, one thing that, that bothers me about this, we're, we're going to get up to scaffold high. How long is it going to take us from scaffold high to finish? You know, is it going to take another two years? Is it going to take another three years? That man's been sitting up, you know, looking at that stuff for all this time. And, I mean, you know, next month we're going to come and the house is going to be done up to a scaffold high, and that's it. Uh, and the construction work is not done on the exterior. That's kind of where I'm coming from on this side. And I understand what you're saying. However, the list that Catherine gave me is not up to scaffolding high. The difference in what we're talking about is Mr. Nelson works up to scaffolding high, the bids that I gave you from Zimmerman Construction are from the roof level down. He's the gentleman that lost his house and said that he will have, can start 
his estimate was six to eight weeks, and that it would take about two weeks to get it done. But we're not talking there about at the end of that time having it up to scaffolding level high. We're talking from roof down. So that would address, Jim, I think the, uh, the area that you're talking about, am I correct? You're going to work scaffold high, Mr. Nelson, and then this, the other contractor would go ahead and take care of the higher portion of that work, am I correct? Yes, sir. He's going to work from scaffold high up, not from roof lying down, if you're going to put shingles on it, right? I think he's just using uh, that statement as to characterize the area that's going to be worked on, not the sequence of whether they start at the top or the bottom. Mr. Friesen, do you have Catherine's phone number, Montgomery's? Yes, I do. Okay. Would you mind calling her um, once a week until we meet next? If there's some problems with a contractor or something, uh, keep her apprised of what's going on on the property. Absolutely. Thank you. And I, I would work with her, you know, very closely to, to make sure that you all are on the same page in terms of, and if there are items where there's a discrepancy exist, uh, you know, exists or, or a difference of opinion, that you communicate with her and, and you know, seek a resolution of those things. Yes, sir. Any other discussion? I would make a motion that we uh, consider the, or continue this matter until October 6th, um, subject to uh, an agreement that the Bowmans will be here, the contractor will be here, that Mr. Friesen will stay in weekly contact uh, with Miss Montgomery. I'm going to second the motion, but this is the last time I'm going to vote on a continuance, and that's just me speaking. But I'm going to second this one, and I'm going to vote for it this time. But I think we need to do something else if the, if. You know, if, we, if we're not in compliance uh, as of the next board meeting. Well, so I, I second the motion. I can tell this board right now that I, as of the 6th, that property will not be because I can't get the contractors there by that time. Mr. Sanford, was there any work you wanted to have completed between now and the 6th as part of your motion? Uh, well, I would add to the motion um, that Mr. Nelson bring photographs of the work that he has uh, completed uh, from this day until October 6th. Is that acceptable to you to be continuing the second? We have a motion and a second. Please register your vote. Mark, you have the continuance request October the 6th is approved, and I just, you know, want to restate the, uh, I, I, th I think, you know, we have a common understanding. The more work you, you complete and the sooner you complete it, if Mr. Nelson completes everything that's, that he's responsible for and told us that he's going to do before October the 6th, the Bowman's in fact are here as an act of good faith. You've been in touch with Catherine and are working on any items that are discrepancies and areas that are not clear between you, I think, you know, will benefit you. I mean, I think uh, you're sensing the frustration and, you know, that we are, are uh, you know, I'm pleased that, that we're making progress, but, I mean, there's a lot of frustration associated with this case. And... Um, the, the contractors that, that, that you've engaged or committed to, I, you know, I would, I would be sure to touch base with them in advance of that meeting and be sure and bring back any changes. And if they can start earlier, I think, you know, that's going to benefit you as well. Yes, sir. So we will see you on October the 6th. Yes, sir. Before we complete our business, now that Mr. Baker is with us, we have minutes to approve. Move we'll approval of minutes of June 16th. Session. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? June 16th minutes are approved. September 1st meetings, a 
motion from Mr. Baker or Mr. Stone Cipher would be in order. Move approval of the minutes of uh, June, uh, September 1st. First. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Those minutes are approved. The motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. We are adjourned.